Hi, I'm Charlie Collins, and we're talking sport. Yeah, and you're very welcome to Talking Sport this week. I'm joined by Damien Dowes of the Inishon Independent and Gary McDade, manager of Glen Swilly GAA. But we're going to talk about colleges football to them initially because, of course, uh, they're back to work. Gary's feeling very sorry for himself as he's uh, joined us this morning. Back to work after a long summer off. No sympathy from myself or Damien or anyone else here. Um, this is prompted really by uh, a message I got from Jared Callahan, and he mentioned the fact that uh, schools were going back and colleges football is very important. And it, it got me thinking about how important colleges football really is in terms of bringing players through um, from that level through to county level. Uh, we saw the Buncrana Cup team won a few weeks ago. We saw the under-17s won the Jim McGuigan Cup. And I was just talking to Gary before we came on air about the lack of success we've had at, at minor level. So, Damien, let's start with you. You're very welcome. Uh, Any show started a new initiative a few years ago, bringing the colleges together and, and playing at, at Ulster level. Seemed to work very well. And now they're ready to take the step up uh, to, to senior football at colleges level. Aye, that's it. This is the fourth year that show have had their combined team in. I suppose we'd seen the example, the big example of the Dublin Hurling College, as you know, that had uh, really transformed Dublin Hurling. And we've seen how well that they've done. It's taken them 20 years to get to that inter-county level. Yeah. But uh, they had done that. And we thought, well, why not try it for any show? And we, we contacted those two colleges. It took us about 18 months to get the thing up and off and off the ground. But it's been a tremendous success for for the, the clubs individually, for the schools individually, for the players themselves. And, you know, you're starting to see any show players come through now into the inter-county uh, underage teams at 17, 16, 18 in probably numbers that reflect how many kids there is playing uh, football in Inishon like there's seven clubs in Inishon I remember back in 2009 I think there was only one lad from that in the entire minor squad yeah. and we were looking at this and saying that, that can hardly be right like you know and always the talk was that you know Inishon club football at underage level as well wasn't of a high enough standard there might have been some merit in that um, but we said let's do something about it and we identified this Ulster Colleges competition as a way to do it. And yeah. um, it's been a real eye-opener for us. I mean, the likes of St. Eunan's College has been in it for donkey's years, so they've been used to it, but it's been some eye-opener for us. And, you know, we've found that our teams are, are relatively competitive as well against some of the best young teams in Ulster, like, yeah. you know, and it's been a great boost for the boys. And it's really helped them break in then too to the county development squads at, at the different age groups because they kind of know the level that's expected and, the, you know, they're, they're kind of used to playing with those representative teams. like yeah. you know. And the schools bought into it, Damien, because you always think the schools will want to, you know, have their own name out there, but it, it would appear uh, from the outside looking in that the schools really bought into the whole concept. Absolutely. I mean, the first thing we had to do is we had to get the, the permission from uh, the five schools and the shown. So we, we went to the principals of the schools, we explained what it was we were trying to do. We explained to them that, you know, there was going to be three, four matches, five matches where boys would be having to go out of school for the day, there'd be training and so on. Uh, and the schools have been fantastic in their support for it, like you know, and, and they continue to play their individual schools competition as well within Donegal and the vocational schools competitions within Donegal. So this it's it's really the the combined and shown schools team is is really kind of like a, a development squad or a representative team picking the best out of the seven the seven clubs, and um, they've done they've done tremendously well. And you know, after playing at the Ranafast level for the last three years we've we've gone up now and this year we'll play it in the McLaren Cup which is an under 18 and a half competition for the first time um, Sean Noonan who's uh, the coach with Declan Boner's under 17 team and will be involved with the minors next year as well he's managing that team so at this time of the year I mean that the, the Donegal minor finals on this Saturday yeah. or Sunday night Unions against Boncrana and you know the minor competition has finished for everyone else in the county at this stage there's no underage football left hardly at that age group like you know but over the these autumn months now the boys that are going to the Kalashian is showing the boys are in St. Eunice College are all going to have a high caliber training and high caliber matches running from now pretty much into into November. Like and that's uh, you know, uh, it's a time when club football's dormant uh, at underage yeah, level. And yeah. it's it's you know, we think it's probably the missing link in the development of underage uh squads and underage football in the county and you know, we're delighted that Ulster Colleges in the first instance welcomed us in and 
and that the schools have been and the players themselves and the clubs have got so well behind it. Yeah. St. Eunan's tra- great tradition, of course, in colleges football. Uh, even from my days there, uh, Gary, there was huge excitement when it came around to playing the likes of St. Columns or going up to Oma or playing Mahara or whatever. Uh, not much success. There was sporadic success over the years, which caused great excitement as well. And I suppose at that time you, you had a college where there was a lot of borders and guys coming from all over the county. It's, it's, it's not that situation now, but uh, good success in recent years at, at, at very underage level, not so much at senior level. Yeah, I suppose Charlie, like we opened our doors in 1906, so like this is our 107, 107 years now since we the school has, has uh, began and football has always played a huge part. Probably the most significant start of the GA in the college was uh, John Wilson back in the 1950s. He went on to be tarnished to the con- country. Yeah. He was one of the men responsible then and he got the team to the McCrory final in 1956, so he did. And they actually contested a few McCrory finals around that year in 1956 and in 1959 and 1961. Unfortunately, lost to three McCrory finals. So the school has never actually won a McCrory yeah. final. Then they had Michael Cullen there. Uh, he came in after that there. And then you had Paddy Tunney after that there. And I suppose the baton then has been passed gradually down the line. There's like myself and Colin McFadden in the two gardens and Chris Carr up there at the minute. So there's so like, it's a good tradition in our school as well. Like, um, I remember last year when the boys got beat in the McLaren semi-finals. So did you, you were on a bit of tradition there. Like, we're in the dressing room afterwards, and it was Michael's Lurgan beat us in the semi-final, and they went on to win the final. And it was a pretty emotional and down dressing room, so it was. But I remember Mr McFadden, Colin was there, and myself was there, and then you had Eddie Harvey, who was retired. From, past, my, from my time at the college past, yeah. past teacher, past pupil, yeah. as in me and Colin. And you had Michael Cullen. Okay, yeah. Mike, Michael's in his seventies now. Yeah. He wouldn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't miss many college games. So he wouldn't like mm. pass coach, pass pupil. Like, it was a, I, and there was a great sense of belonging in our place. You know what I mean? Like, it's nearly as if the batons kind of been passed on to like myself and Colin now, and we have to make sure that sense of ownership and that sense of pride stays up yeah. in Century Hill. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, when the boys come in there and first year into us, they see the photographs in the corridors and the wall, and they see. The, I mean, the, the only eight, the only team that's ever won an A competition, like was um, 1956, uh, the, the college won the Ranafas Cup, captain by Father Austin Lafferty, mm. now Paris mm. Priest in our draw. Yeah. And um, he actually was prince, president in the college as well, so it was. was for a number yeah. of years. Yeah. And like, I managed the Ranafas team last year, like, and that was the thing the boys always looked at was that 1956 photograph on the wall, like, and that was their aim at the start of the year to try and be the next mm. team to get. They, yeah. they, they, yeah. they photograph on the wall because like in fairness we have a good few competitions on the wall where we've won B competitions but like like there's a lot of history in the school and when they walk the corridors they know they have five, six years to try and get their photograph on the wall and yeah. they're going to be on the wall for the history yeah. of the school. And, and given that history and tradition uh, does that rule out uh, any sort of a notion of amalgamating the way the show in colleges have, have amalgamated with somebody Gary, or, or is that just not possible for a college like St Eunice to think about, and one or two others in the county as well? Well, like we we would be happy enough to stay in our own. You know what I mean? Like, um, we have probably a population there. The man like this year we're around eight hundred forty. You know, but like just because we have that size of pop population doesn't mean that you know we're blessed with loads of Gaelic like footballers. I mean, yeah. you you look at Letter Kenny. Letter Kenny's two GA clubs. It has about ten soccer clubs in the town. You know what I mean? So you're fighting a battle there right away. Yeah. So like, I, um, I, no means it means that you have all access to the top G players the whole time. And then also like maybe the thing about it, Letterkenny is perfectly si- situated in the county. I mean, you're in the middle of the county. So like, if the, we could attract maybe more players within a, a further radius. You know, what I mean, at the minute we're going out as far as St Michael's, Terman, Glenswoolley. Um, we have one or two up from Fanet, so we have as well um, Newton and Convoy. We've yeah. always have a few from that area. We could try and push that boat out a bit. You know what I mean? Like, and when player when players of a, who have can play and compete at that level, maybe if they see that there, I mean the prestige of maybe playing McCrory Cup. I mean that's what we always tell the first years come on long term ambition is to play McCrory Cup if you're good enough as a team. I mean like. Peter McCrory player is a distinct badge of honour, so it is like yeah. you can always walk where you're held, he, held high so, so you can yeah. after you play McCrory Cups. So I suppose know. the problem you have there, those areas you mentioned, there's there's colleges in that those catchment areas as well, mm-hmm. and uh, the way things are now, maybe people will go to whatever's handy to them rather than thinking about a football situation. Yeah, I mean, that's a big thing in, in Donegal. I mean, if you look at Tyrone, for example, almost CBS, yeah. 
Anybody who's a good footballer in West Tyrone, go to almost CBS. Mm. Anybody who's a good footballer in East Tyrone, go to Dungannon, St. Pat's Dungannon, the yeah. academy. Derry, so, Derry so would be the same, wouldn't it? They have Mahara yeah. and Ma- Mara Felter are very close situ to each other, mm. you know mm. what I mean? And and then you have the two big Newry schools as well in County Down, who even take on our Ma as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, so that's basically, I think, the way forward that maybe for us to compete at a A level every year. I mean, at, at the minute, like, our teams majority of our teams compete at B level and if they're able to mm. pu- push on and compete at a-, a level by all means we'll give them that opportunity for example like that team that mine played Ranafast last year like uh, they came in first year in, t- in 2010 they won the under 13 B yeah. so, so they did and which was the Corn Colin Kill they moved up in and played Corn and Oak at under 14 and and played under 15 at Brock Couple last year Ranafast and every year they made it out of their group so they did, and it got to the, the quarter final. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, and it was um, it was a huge achievement. Like, because from talking to the likes of Paddy Tony and Mike and Michael uh, Cullen, like, um, the Brock Cup was the first time we ever got out of the group. So we did, and the Corn and Oak and the and the Rana Fast. You're talking between twenty and thirty years since a yeah, team from the college had. So like, we are moving in the right direction. Do you know what I mean? Like, but it, it takes massive work, Charlie. Do you know what I mean? To mm. get them to to that level and to get the boys to dedicate. To that level, because there's so many things in Letterkenny that the other distractions, distractions that, yeah. that they can get into that are a lot easier than football. Yeah. You know, and, and there's a huge amount of discipline for them to be, play at that level as well. Yeah, I, I think that goes hand in hand with their school Absolutely. work. Then, you Absolutely. know what I mean? Yeah. They can discipline, discipline themselves regards training and football. You know, mm. what I mean, it goes hand in hand with their school work yeah. as well. Distractions in the show as well. Obviously, now in the in the modern times and, and getting young fellas to to focus and and concentrate on GEA football because any show will be known very much as a very big st- soccer stronghold as well. Do you mean? I think there's about eighteen soccer clubs in the show, whereas you've you've got um you you've got seven GEA clubs, like you know, so. Yeah. Huge, huge soccer tradition there as well. Like, but uh, a bit like what Gary said. You know, we, we I suppose we're drawn from the seven clubs within the show, and you know, you're you're trying to identify the best talent there and trying to encourage them to along. And look, there's big logistical problems to running the the clash in the show. And I mean, you've got players coming from Malin, players coming from Bort, and where where do you train? Like, you know, so sometimes yeah. the training there was training last night for the Ranafast team was being was held in uh, was held in Muff, and players have to be bussed or or taken sure. to there. Yeah. Like, you know, even trying to arrange a time. You know, and and trying to get time out of school. We we entered the Brock two years ago, and we found that uh, it's kind of played in the in the spring of the year, and it uh, it's around the time of the mock exams. Now, if if you're in a school that has just a single school, mock exams last what eight or ten days, whatever it is. Yeah. We were coordinating with four schools, and the mock exams were on at different times in the different schools. It was over about a three to four week period where we couldn't play or couldn't really train. Mm. And we found that we just, because we're a combined team, we weren't able to uh, enter the Brock Cup in subsequent years because it just it was too hard to find the time and for yeah. it. So we've had to focus on these. But yeah, look, the boys have, have come in and they've nailed down. And, and like the McLaren, the McLaren team have, I think they have a couple of training sessions over them already. Like, you know, so they're actually back together training before the school year starts. And, you know, it's a big step up for us. To go into that, that's the first time to play that, that the highest level, grade, yeah. that under eighteen, the half yeah. grade. Like you know, so they're they're really looking forward to it. Exciting, it's just a, it's just it is. I yeah. said, you know, and there is an excitement about it. Like, and it's a matter as well of identifying the you know the players that are that are are, are good enough for it, and, and then encouraging them to do it because you know the likes of you know Georgie Kelly there, for example, from Bort, he's playing with the Derry City under nineteens at the minute. Like you mm-hmm. know, so he's got big commitments there. Yeah, um, you know. He's training a number of days a week with those playing also senior league. Like, you know, is he going to be able to give the necessary commitment to it? He is interested in staying. It's a school's competition he wants to play and so on. But mm. if the likes of Darrell Connor is going to be the McLaren team next year, um, minor captain this year, playing in the county final on, on Sunday night. Um, John Campbell uh, from Bunkrano is in the under 17 team. So you, you have a lot of players that have, you know, big game players or big time players, like, you know, that are that Coming are in the there. school. Or come yeah. in the, and, and they see it and, you know, on the back of it, a lot of them have got into have got into these the county squads, like you know, which yeah. has been a tremendous success for them. Now, I suppose the other uh, distraction we should talk about, Gary, uh, is the academic situation because they're going to college to to advance themselves academically and 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 the career ways, and and sometimes the football and the commitments that's required can get in the way of that, and and parents then have to look at that situation, and uh, it's a real balancing act there. And I mean, on this program, on a number of occasions, we've talked about the difficulties because. Guys, young lads who are t- who are good at one sport tend to be good at a couple of sports, and there's huge demands on them. Yeah, uh, like you know, 
they really have to maybe sit down or demons on about there and finally and maybe around the age of 17, 18, right, I'm going to have to choose something because I'm being pulled left, right and centre. Yeah. And like, also back out you're on about the de- demands, like the demands too, like in teachers, like say for example, now I was talking to you off the air there before we came on, like the yeah. new su- supervision and substitution. I mean like, everything at the minute done in schools is the goodwill of teachers staying yeah. in after school you know what I mean going away on a Saturday playing a game giving up your lunch times to doing a bit of work with the boys and that's all a goodwill demand and the department don't really look at that they're, they're still like always pulling you they're looking for more as well they want more of teachers substitution su- supervision extra 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 like you know and so not as well alone the pupils but the teachers are being pulled as well and, like, and, mm. they, and I would be always very wary of that there that the department really don't see the good will of what teachers are doing outside of like I mean there's days a lot of staff in our school don't be out of the school after 6 o'clock and training yeah. teams you know after yeah, school yeah, yeah that has to be recognised and unfortunately as you say as time's gone on it's less recognised than it used to be because the people you mentioned like uh, Michael Cullen and Paddy Tunney I mean they give Tremendous amount of time. I'm sure you guys are doing exactly the same now. Yeah, like I remember myself when I was in the McLaren team in '96. Like pa- Paddy Tony was a manager. Like we we were out training Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and we always had a game on a Saturday. I remember meeting the college on a Saturday morning. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, and that, that was obviously I never thought of pa- Paddy no, giving exactly. up a Saturday that time, yeah, but now yeah. I realise. You know what I mean? Like he, he we'd meet on a Saturday morning, maybe eight o'clock or half eight in the college to get a bus and head up the north and play a McLaren match on a Saturday morning because all matches that time were on Saturday mornings. So, so they were like, but that was Paddy Saturday gone as well. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and he was married with a family Sure What about the link then Gary and I'll ask Damien this one as well the link between success at college level now and, and at county level and I suppose we've all become excited in the last few years particularly with one in Ulsters and one in all Ireland's and uh, I was listening to Declan Boner talking to Tom Comack on, on the GA programme in Highland Radio last night and he's taken over the, the manager's job at minor level and he talked about how significant the uh, Bontrana Cup victory was the Jim McGuigan at under 17 to bring those boys through does the can the college just play a big role in that as well? Yeah, I think it, maybe. I mean, Dibbin were talking there off air as well. Like, if you look at um, Calvin, for example, like they have a full time strength and conditioning coach. Um, your man from Tyrone, Peter Donnelly. Yeah. So he's like, and he looks across, looks after every strength and conditioning development squad in there. And then some Pat's Cavanagh are actually on part of part of that as well. So I think I think I heard Jim touch touch this maybe in an interview with yourself in the past that maybe that's the line that Donegal County Board need ground is hire a full time strength and conditioning coach because like what we've tried to do in the school so we have back in the colleges like um, the under 16s coming in and the senior come in if they're on any strength and conditioning programs from their county teams we'll, we'll try and facilitate that and provide, make sure they do it in the school maybe with and anyone's not in those development squads that they continue they can join in as well with yeah. it you know what I mean yeah. so I think there, there's definitely links there that have to be made and like if you look at like you're on about the under 17s there and I think we had four not under 17s and I think we had probably, probably the same in the under 16 mm. uh, Bunker mm. Cup teams you know what I mean so like well, there's links there obviously between us and I'm sure any showing of the same links you know yeah. what I mean between Vital, vital, isn't it? Because as I say, if we're, if we're going to have success, and, and actually myself and Gary were talking, uh, we won a minor in '96, and then it was ten years before we won another Ulster minor, and we haven't won one since. So you know, there's a lack of success at that particular level. And and given the fact that we tend to produce pretty good senior footballers, you have to ask the question: Why is that happening, Damien? Yeah, that's it. Well, I mean, you you take a look, like you know, that the the Tyrone team that are contesting the all the all Ireland minor, like a lot of those boys will have gone to the likes of Oman, will have gone to the likes of Dungannon, will have had great experience. Playing Ulster Colleges football all through or all through the spring, yeah. Um, and at that stage, you know, there's no club football going on here really at underage level for our lads. Like you know, the Ulster Minor League kicks in then in in March time. Like you know, which the way the the way this the season is kind of set up uh, for schools in the north, predominant particularly like is like you have your schools football between September and and February March time. You have your uh, minor league football from uh, March and April, and then you're into the championship. Donegal, by and large is missing the, that school's football element of it like, and does suffer from that like you know yeah. I mean so Union's College there's a school in Ballyshannon and now the Nishon teams they're the only ones that are are, are, are getting that calibre of football and there's 22 or 24 uh, secondary schools yeah. in the county so there are mo- moves afoot and there's surveys going on within clubs that, within Northern Board and Southern Board that to determine whether or not they can do other amalgamations because there's been structural changes to uh, colleges football um, within the whole the, the the whole of Ireland, but within Ulster in the last year or two, where yeah. the the vocational schools and the Ulster colleges boards are being merged together, so there'll just be single competitions from here on in. And you know, individually, the schools in Inishown, for example, even the likes of Cairn, which has a thousand odd pupils, and Scullywara with six hundred mm. odd pupils, 
aren't competitive and wouldn't be competitive enough to be able to go into Ulster colleges, even B level, like you know, That's I mean, amazing, like, you know, isn't it? just they're just yeah. the, the 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 same tradition isn't there. You know, the, the, those teams play within their own um, within their own school competitions here in the county. The the, the school down in Carrick, uh, vocational uh, school in mm. Carrick, has dominated. Um, vocational so vocational schools yeah. football now they've got a student body of 200 about 100 boys like and the mm. question you know it's brilliant for them that they've done so well there's been big links between the clubs and the, the school down yeah. there they've done so well but you'd have to you know say what are the other uh, vocational schools in the county doing if they're you know three four five times the size drawn from a much wider pool of players if they're if they're getting beat right left and centre by that Carrick team great for Carrick but mm. it, uh, reflective probably of a wee bit of weakness in, in the rest of the schools uh, and you know, they, it's got to be about more than fulfilling fixtures, and it, it's it's not just a matter of putting a team out. You know, teams need to be prepared for this. Yeah, like you know, yeah. and that's that's what's happening in the rest of Ulster. It's what's happening in the rest of the of the of the country, and it probably isn't happening to Donegal to the degree it needs to be. So sure. within the show, I mean, this, the, you know, the likes of Sean O'Hare down in Maville and, and Liam Galbraith and Crana College have all got involved in coaching capacity along with the Nishon schools teams, but it's very heavily. Uh, and very much the, the the club coaches that are that are involved there, like you know, and while there's support from the schools, um, you know, it's very heavily the club coaches that are yeah. that are driving the thing, like yeah. you know, when they're taking charge. So a change of mindset, really, Gary. Then, yeah, well, like uh, talking or touching on Damien's point there about schools, maybe. I mean, like, it's up to schools maybe to take the baton. I mean, uh, St Kieran's Ballygally and um, Trin- Holy Trinity Cookstown yeah. this year they've actually left vocational football. So they have, and they've moved to Ulster College of Football for the first time, and both of them have entered at all B level. Apart from St Kieran's Ballygall, they've entered McCrory. They've entered every other team at B level. Mm. For the and they're, they're same. They're going the same way about it as ourselves up in the college and St Kieran's. Like if they're good, if they're good enough, they'll win the B and they'll move up. Yeah. Then you know yeah. what I mean, and they'll give that player the opportunity to compete. I mean, like, but it's not that long ago. I was I was looking last night on, online, just looking at some of the history of some of the schools in Donegal and Phil Carroll. I mean, won a couple of McLarens in, in the nineteen eighties. So they yeah. did. And I remember myself playing colleges football, playing against St Columbus and Stern Order. Do you know what I mean? Like uh, they played. And like last year, we our Rana Fast team would have played um, a challenge match against Glentys, mm. and Glentys, we think we beat them maybe five or six, but they give us as hard a match as we got throughout the year. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. In Ulster yeah. Colleges, and also we played a challenge match against Rosses and Dunlow, and also we got as hard a match. Like I mean, it wasn't once by no way one sided. Yeah. Both teams very well organised and were very well s- s- set up as well. I mean, so. I think maybe schools have to grab the bat themselves. Like the, their schools off the top of my head, and you're probably looking as well. I mean, Carndonagh used to compete in their own a few years ago as well. Yeah. But back yeah. they competed competed at McLaren, and so, so, so they did probably that time. They did the pick of hole of any show, and there's less schools hmm. down around the area. Um, like and maybe the likes of Carrick. I mean, like I mean, like if the, if they could all go in and have a go at B level, and if they're able, then push on to to A. I mean, like I I think you would develop more players that way. Maybe than force than the amalgamations because those schools ha- have the ability. I mean, yeah, it's um, the play. I think the players are there. It's a matter of nurturing them and get, getting them out. You know what I mean? Like I'll, I'll give you the example: St Paul's Bestbrook beat the McCrory final last year. St Paul's used to play vocational That's football. That's right. Yeah, they were, yeah. They were won on quite a lot as well, mm. and they played moved to colleges a few years ago. Um, it was actually 2010, 2009 was the first year they moved to colleges. So so it was, and now they played in their la- McCrory final l- yeah. last year. And that team that got beaten in the McCrory final actually played B the whole way through until under 15 and a half. And they won the under 15 and a half, the Trainer Cup, and they beat our boys in the final. Colin McFadden was in charge of them. Mm. And that uh, team was a, our current senior team last year, beating the McLaren semi final. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, so so, yeah. so there's the, those boys entered a B. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, they they won the B. They didn't want it thirteens or fourteens, but they won eventually fifteen. Yeah, and then they pr- played Rana fast at sixteen, sure. mm. and then played McCrory and got a McCrory yeah. final. I mean, it's there the works put in. Absolutely, <laughs> it just sounds as if there's a wider debate here somewhere uh, about this, Damien. We're not going to solve the problems here today. We're just airing uh, perhaps you know what might be done or what could be done, but there is the the possibility or the probability for a number of people to sit down and, and just have a look at this because I suppose that the, the the frightening thing about it is that there's players being missed 
because of the way the things set up at the moment and you don't want that you want if there's a player there with the potential to go on and play at a senior inter county level for whatever reason uh, he's been missed out we need to plug that gap oh i mean that's that's you know the 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 college football is a, is a fair step up even from from club football like you yeah. know and and then the inter county is a, a step up again and and what you see at the college's football is the boys that have been able to st- make that step from club to colleges, like you know, you're starting to see, you know, and there'll be a, a number of those will be able to step up. And if you don't have that that in between level of it, like there's a possibility that you'll miss those players. Some of the players, and we know from Minnesota's perspective, that they needed the uh, exposure to that that Ulster colleges level to give them either the confidence or just the you know the, the superior training and games that they've got and game time they got to make the step up to 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 the underage county squads. So it's very clearly one of the links in the chain that's there. Like, and mm. you know, the the inter county vocational schools competition that is has now it seems it seems to be finished. Like, yeah, you know, it's, yeah, and and yeah. and the the county board did invest. I don't know. They invested maybe a five figure sum in the in the promotion and the development mm. of that team. Like, you know, and maybe that's money now that could be targeted, at, as Gary says, at bringing in expertise um, to to allow uh, schools, uh, clubs, whatever it is, to to avail of. Good coaching good techniques coaching, in terms yeah. of in terms of whether it is strength and condition or whatever else it is like, and that's what they've done. As we're saying that St Pat's Cabin, I mean they've um, they've they won the Rana Fast this year. Um, they've got big designs on the McCrory Cup in two years' time. You know it's their best team in forty odd years, whatever. Like, mm. and you know the Cavan County Board has come very firmly on board with them um, to 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 help uh, provide support in the background and support the teachers, which is what Gary's talking about as well. Like one, unfortunately, one of the reasons maybe that. That schools football song, you know, teachers are pulled so many ways, and there's so many more demands being made yeah. on them these days. And okay, you know, everyone talks about the three months holidays. My wife's a teacher, like you know, yeah, we hear yeah, plenty yeah. of it, like you know. But you know, they they are within their working and within their working life now. They're under more demands than they ever were before. The, the you know the, the demands from the academic side, the points race, and so on. Yeah. So teachers don't necessarily have as much time to invest in in the sports side of it as as they would have had in the past. So support is needed. And whether that support is coming. You know, it really needs clubs to buy into it as well and support their local schools. A lot of clubs are already doing this and the county does this at, at primary school level. They send coaches into the schools yeah. just to help um, and, and clubs, uh, coaches support those county paid for coaches going into the primary schools. It's like something that could be developed at, uh, at, um, at, at secondary school level as well with the view to just improving the overall standard. You know, it's not about the... The, the you know the the winning all the titles ever just mm. promote and and lift the overall standard and you know you be very excited for next year's minor team because Declan Boners uh, now has the pick of two back to back winning Bunkrana teams and and they had very big wins as well at the weekend yeah. and the yeah. uh, and the McGuigan number seventeen right. cup like yeah. you know so you know and as we say there's going to be probably eight or ten of those players now that have got Ulster College's uh, football McLaren level um, this autumn. Um, but so it, should, it should all, it should all, should all add. Well, hopefully we'll be sitting here someday talking about a, a college one in the McGrory Cup. Oh well, I mean, that's the ultimate aim yeah. to eventually b- b- bring bring one across the border and bring it in, mm. bring it into the town. You know what I mean? Like, um, it's never been done in Donegal, and it would be a hell of an achievement. So, like, and even going back there, some of the points that Damien was on about, like, I even from talking to the lads in the school, you know, and. The level of Ulster colleges, like for people that wouldn't maybe be at the games, that like it's so high. Like, I'm from talking to the lads, I would ask them, and you know, maybe they're after playing a county game. And I said, How did that compare now to what we were the game we had against Abbey last week? Yeah, or yeah. he says, Our colleges games are harder, yeah. I mean, interesting, yeah. I mean, mm. Because I'm probably then I'm looking at trying to think outside the box here. Like, those when you're playing college football, you're with the lads five days a week. Nine to four, yeah. I mean, maybe a nine to six and training days or, or or whatever. You know what yeah. I mean. So there's a bond there, and everyone knows each other really, really well, and and that comes through then on the pitch. And I'll go back to Calvin again, like that's some Pat's Calvin team. Like they won the Ranafast last year. They won the Brocket under fifteen. They won the Carnanog. No, they lost Carnanog and won the, won the Dalton in mm. the first year under thirteen. And now, as he said, they have big aims for McCrory in, in two years' time. Like, but they Calvin County Board have got a. a Behind that, with the likes of Peter Donnelly going in there and helping as regards to strength and conditioning, making sure everything's right, and they would also, and a lot of schools in the north as well, would have a lot of help from the county board getting the expertise of strength and conditioning in that down there and, and making helping the players develop. Do you know what I mean? Like, and that that cabin team, like I remember talking to the manager l- last year. Um, I was talking to him. I rang him to congratulate him after they won the Ranafast, and like he was saying, because like, they would have beat us in the Cornyn and the 
Brock quarterfinals, yeah, and they went on both years, so they did to, to claim it. Then and the uh, Brock and lost the Carnegie Oak final, like, and he said they he said they really didn't want to meet us and they ran a fast that series because they always thought that we were the team that gave them the hardest game. Yeah, he did. And yeah. He, said, he said we're really physical and we're on, on top of them the whole time. He said and the players didn't like playing against them. Mm. He says so we were glad we, we, we missed you. And we're like so I that was great, and I went back and told our players that. Yeah, you know what I mean, so that gave our players a real lift. So did that, that they know that they're not that far away. I mean, they're not that far away from the best team of their age group in Ulster. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, the caliber of those games is it is phenomenal. Top like you know, class, and, and yeah. like, they do be on. I mean, and Sean played St. Unions last year in the in that Ranafast quarter final, and mm. the game was held down in Bort. Like there was a big crowd there, big interest. The first time that you would have had two Donegal teams contesting a Ranafast quarter final down there, like, and it just. The, the the caliber and the quality of the game, like you know, was, was the buzz around it was, re- it was really, really, really yeah, good. Yeah. And something that you know, it hopefully, will drive both, yeah. both on. Like. We're kind of running out of time here. Just the minor league finals. We mentioned the Division One final, Buncrana against St. Unans. They're both on in McCool Park on Sunday evening. That's at eight, Buncrana St. Unans and Neath Columba and Arosa. Uh, that's the Division Two final. At 6.30, the Junior B semi-final replay, our drag against Neve Ulton, is on in Fintra on Saturday. The winners of that play, Letter Kenny Gales. Plenty of league fixtures as well. Just an award, boys, Dublin or Kerry, Damien? I fancy Dublin as Dublin well. well. Ross Common, Tyrone semi-final, Gary? Um, I would say, looking at Tyrone, I watched the Ulster minor, minor final. They're very unlucky that day. I think they've learned a lot from from that game. Maybe a lot of youngsters, you know, yeah. thought the game was over. I think they've learned a lot. I think they won't let it slip this weekend. Okay. Ross Common, Tyrone. Yeah, you've got to go with Tyrone, Tyrone as, well. as well. Great, great tradition. That I'd love to chat. I'd love to talk to you about the championship and all that sort of stuff and what's happening and Jim McGuinness situation. But unfortunately, we're, 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 we're running out of time here. Gary, as someone who's involved in it, uh, it has been mentioned now the possibility of having the championship very early or at least um, playing maybe uh, one or two rounds of it early in April next year and then parking it and then letting the county team get on with it. Uh, I mean, we're gonna, we, we'll never get around the situation of club and county no matter how we try to do it, but there's no easy solution to this, is there? No, like, there's lots of things, ideas being thrown about at the minute. Um I wouldn't be in favour personally of that one about the championship going ahead in April. I mean, if you was even proposed that the three rounds could be played, so you're if you're out of the championship, you know, what I mean your season's basically basically over at the end of April. I mean, I would look at our neighbours Tyrone there, so I would like they would usually play their league before they start the championship. And I was just talking to yourselves off air there, like we have four league games left at the minute, and if we had played three league games instead of those three championship games we'd have one league game left going the last weekend in August yeah. so you could start your championship in, in September I would mm. be in more favour of going that way than the, than the other way Yeah now, We're struggling to get it right Damien aren't we we're struggling to accommodate everybody here and that's what you have to try and do and it's not easy Absolutely and the word is that there's going to be a fixtures forum now for the clubs in the next two or three weeks where uh, Jim McGuinness or the management will come and put the proposal to the clubs for the clubs to go back and discuss and, and ultimately like you know they will then give the sanction to the CCC to set up the competitions next year and whatever the right way is and that uh, yeah we, we, we haven't we haven't got it right like you know but uh, look the club championship is the blue ribbon competition the senior championship is the blue ribbon competition in here and we, we need to be very careful as well that we maintain it at a good level like and we don't undermine it I think this year with the group the, the way the groups have gone like has been has been a very good very fresh yeah. uh, approach to it like and you know it's something that you want to see set up and it's a matter of being able to schedule that in and you know maybe you know if, if Donegal are forced enough to get to the third Sunday in September next year and the championship has been run off in its entirety after that maybe mm-hmm. the thing that might have to be sacrificed is participation with our senior champions in the Ulster Club the Championship. Club. Yeah. Perhaps perhaps that's it, you know, because we can't have the situation that we have last year where the entire thing is run off in, in, in six days and teams no. are playing, you no. know, maybe two no. championship games in seven days, or whatever the yeah. case is. That's that's not really fair. Like and you know, if you did it wouldn't be ideal now and the team that qualifies for the Ulster Club Championship, you know, there's a great prestige and so on with that. Like but you know, it is only the one team and there's sixteen teams in the senior championship. Yeah. Like and, and the greater good needs to be needs to be observed as well so wider debate again we haven't time this this morning uh, Damien Dodds of the Inish Owned Independent uh, Gary McDade uh, St Eunice College and Glenn Swally GA thanks very much for coming in that's it from uh, Talking Sport we'll be back with more next week <laughs>